Good morning. First, let me thank the media that attend this. I think it's so wonderful that we have so many people that continue to put this great conference in a, a wonderful light and manner. So I appreciate all the media that attended uh, this last few days. I think it's a tremendous opportunity to continue to showcase this great conference. I want to give a special thanks to Mike Oresco. Obviously, we know what Mike did for this conference and, and continues to fight and battle uh, to put us at the forefront of everything. Obviously, welcome uh, to Commissioner Panetti. Tim, I'm thrilled you're with us. A bright, bright future ahead for you. Uh, everybody that's heard you speak and that spent some time around you, we can certainly sense uh, the excitement and the passion that he has for this conference and all the wonderful things he's going to do. I do want to make sure I thank Laird Veach, my former athletic director that actually hired me as the head football coach here at Memphis and, and grateful for him. Wish him the best uh, at Mizzou. And now welcome Ed Scott, our new athletic director. Couldn't be more thrilled uh, for his leadership, his vision, and everything that I plan. And we, him and I, will work together uh, for the future of our Memphis football program, our athletic department in the University of Memphis. But very, very excited to get to work with Ed. Uh, he's going to do a tremendous job. You know, I go back and I look at, you know, the things, obviously I want to focus on the future, but I think that, you know, Tim just mentioned it, the way the 2023 season ended, right, a 10-win season, one of five in our 107-year history of our football program, uh, a Liberty Bowl win in our home city, in our home stadium, right, versus an Iowa State team. I was part of that bowl game uh, about five years prior uh, when we lost that game, and to go back and and to be able to, uh, to find a way to win that game, get a 10-win season, then you look at the momentum that's occurred, okay? As Tim alluded to, this is my ninth year in this conference. I feel like I'm the old man here now um, in my ninth year at Memphis, you know, obviously four as an assistant and my fifth as a head coach. And to see the momentum that's occurring within our uh, football program and the excitement build in this 2024 offseason heading into training camp is, is, is tremendous. I feel very fortunate, guys like... Seth Hennigan, Chandler Martin, so many of those guys, Greg Rubin, uh, Rock Taylor, Demir Blankensee, Kobe Drake. I can name every single one of our returning players that decided, hey, I want to come back for another year. I want to be a part of something special. I like what we're doing. I want to continue to build. I appreciate the relationships, Coach, that we've helped build. And let's see where we can take this thing. So that's how the offseason started, right, with the bowl win and then going into the offseason with so many of our tremendous players saying, hey, I want to be a part of something special. Then you turn around, and I'm very fortunate. I'm appreciative of our president, President Bill Hargrave, for extending me uh, a new contract and saying, hey, we want you to continue to build this thing the right way in the future of, of Memphis, and we believe in you. Then you talk about what's going on right with the FedEx NIL deal. Obviously, very appreciative of FedEx, uh, the Smith family. So grateful for them and what they've meant to me and to our, our great city. And obviously, it's a tremendous honor uh, to be able to represent them every single day. And then you look at what's going on with the stadium. Uh, it just as yesterday, the stadium reconstruction, um, I think they had the bulldozers. I'm sorry, I, I wish I could have been there. I would have had a hard hat on and taken a bulldozer to it myself. But I was here with you guys in Arlington, and uh, that, that's quite exciting, right? I mean, the things, that the, the Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium, the Liberty Bowl, obviously a historic place, but to be able to put and do those renovations and to actually see it happening, uh, it, it's, it's wonderful. And I think that's what all these things that are occurring in this off season. It's just been, it puts a smile on your face. And then you look at season ticket sales are, are, are continuing to increase, and, and we're, they're doing a tremendous job selling those season tickets. So all that being said, um, guess what? Now it's time to play football. And, and I'm grateful for the media, and I know this question's coming, um, about expectations. And nobody has higher expectations for our program, um, for our players and myself and the, the young men and the, and the coaches. Uh, they get to pour into themselves every single day, and, and we're grateful. But that doesn't mean a damn thing. Uh, personally, as a head coach, I haven't accomplished anything I want to in this conference. I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, it starts by uh, training camp and continue to improve, and our players understand that as well. The goal is to win the conference championship, and that's the goal every single year. Uh, but it focuses on improving ourselves and getting 1% better every single day. Um, look, that means nothing. A lot of work to be done. We understand what, what's ahead of us. Well, we got a heck of a schedule in place. It starts with a North Alabama team coming to town. Um, they're a team that actually uh, gave Florida State a lot of fits in Tallahassee last year, so we know we're going to have our hands full versus a North Alabama team that actually plays a game the week before us. Right? Then we have Troy, a team that uh, Coach Summerall was a head coach at that obviously did a tremendous job, back-to-back -back conference champions coming to Memphis. Oh, by the way, we get to go to Tallahassee, and I get to face my old friend Mike Norvell down there versus FSU. Uh, they'll have a bye before us. 
and then uh, appreciate the conference for giving Navy a bye before we travel to Annapolis and play the academy. Turn back around Middle Tennessee, and then games, you know, obviously a tremendous home slate. Excited about all the conference teams coming here, but we have the joy to get to go play at South Florida on a Friday night, which will be a great ESPN game. Right? We also have the ability to go out there and play UTSA. Obviously, we know what a tremendous job Coach Trailer's done there. And then, by the way, a national television game versus Tulane on Thanksgiving. So a lot of challenges ahead. Uh, very, very excited about all the things that are happening within our program. But it's time to put in the work. And can't wait to see what this 2024 Tiger football team is all about. Open for any questions. All right, as we get ready for questions, uh, raise your hand. Uh, but, Coach, in the meantime, why don't you tell us about the two players that came uh, with you this week? Yeah, you know, you look at Seth Hennigan and Chandler Martin. Uh, what's so unique about them is I think they're probably uh, combined, right? They're 21 years old each, right? And so as a combined age, probably the youngest of the group that's come out here. But what, you look at a guy like Seth Hennigan, right, 17 years old, recruited out of high school. Um, and I love it because we're in the great state of Texas. He wasn't even a top 20 quarterback in the entire state coming out of high school. And Seth and I joked around about that yesterday. As you know, wasn't highly recruited, obviously very fortunate to recruit him during COVID. And we started him, and he was the youngest starting quarterback in all of college football. And he's one that stayed loyal and committed to this program. He had opportunities to go other places. He said, you know what, I'm going to continue to do tremendous things, Coach, and we got a lot of goals in front of us. And, and I love Seth. He's, he's, he's a, uh, like a son to me, and I'm going to continue to pour into him and grateful to have him along this journey with then Chandler Martin. Uh, Chandler, obviously, conference, uh, defensive conference, um, all-conference linebacker last season, a young man that transferred from East Tennessee State. Obviously, again, not highly recruited. And Chandler's 21 years old and a guy that uh, has already graduated from college that does a tremendous job, the leader of our defense, um, and just such a joy to be around. I, I absolutely love Chandler. I've gotten to know his family very well. And, and those are two young men. It's always enjoyable to have great football players, but they're even better young men. They do what they're supposed to in the classroom. Uh, I, I, I just, it's a joy to be around them uh, every single day, and, and I'm honored to be their coach. And, I, and it's even great to have them here today and, and experience this. First, first question for the media. We'll start right there in the middle. Oh, Frank Brown and Dale Memphian. Ryan, when you look at the core that you have, um, the players who have been in your locker room the last couple of years, they've won and lost games in a lot of different ways. How does that prepare them for what you guys are trying to accomplish this year? Yeah, you know, I tell our team all the time, and Frank, you and I have had this conversation. You look at the two years prior, and we found ways to lose game, right? We found, found ways to lose versus Houston, right? Four overtimes versus Coach Houston at East Carolina. Um, the SMU game that we could have easily taken to overtime. And then you look at last year, and I think we found ways to win games. And I think what you do is you create um, learning experiences, especially for those guys that have returned. And you try to educate them, right, with all the new faces. We have 31 true freshmen that have never suited up for a college football game. How do we teach them? How do we create adversity throughout training camp? So, you know, those experiences for those teams and those guys that have been here in the past, um, how do we recreate the positive experience? How do we teach them and learn from those things? And that's my job, how I set it up during training camp, obviously during OTAs. Um, but when the going gets tough, right, what were our answers? And I, hopefully I've improved as a head coach to put us in the right situations to have success. But every week's going to stand on its own merits. And look, look forward to when those challenging times come, that our guys rise up and find ways to win the football games. And i got to do everything in my power to prepare them for when those moments occur. Our right, next question will be here to the left. Hey, Ryan, Matt Baker with the Tampa Bay Times. You mentioned uh, in your opening statement uh, FedEx and the, uh, the, the stadium renovation, everything going on there. What are the practical implications, the, the tangible effects that those are going to have on, on the product on the field? Yeah, look, uh, all the glitz and glamour has nothing to do, right? You still got to go block and tackle and, and, and accomplish those things in a daily manner. Um, it, it will still take toughness. It will still take uh, mental fortitude to go out there and accomplish what we want to accomplish. Because guess what? When we line up against Coach Golish in South Florida, they don't care about our stadium. They don't care about our NIL. They don't care um, about how long I've been in this conference. And they don't care about our bowl win. None of that stuff matters. It's just two great football teams going head-to-head -head and seeing what they're all about and competing day-to-day. -day. Now, they're wonderful things for our program. They're wonderful things, actually, for our conference. I think our conference is sitting there saying, wow, we get to hang our hat on this new stadium that's occurring in Memphis, right? No different than what's going to occur down in Tampa. And I think those are things that we can all be proud of. And to see you know, success for all of our member institutions is tremendous. Um, ultimately, you hope that those things 
in turn, for every program, the more they can do to advance themselves. Uh, maybe the better uh, players are able to bring in and the better the product is on the field. So when it's all said and done, you put that all to the side um, and you go play football. And when you're in between those white lines in the fourth quarter with the game on the line, guess what? You're not thinking about, hey, in two years from now, we're going to have a new stadium, right, or a stadium renovation. None of that stuff matters. Or, you know, hey, FedEx put $10 in my pocket. You know, none of that stuff. You go out there and play football. Um, and I think what's so unique is that you see so many advancements amongst all of our uh, schools in this conference, right? It's thrilled to bring Army. We, we know what a, a tremendous um, honor that is actually for our conference to bring them in, right? Grateful for the service men and women um, that serve our country and to be able to have um, West Point join us I mean, in that television market. What a tremendous honor. So I think every one of our member institutions has unique things that are to them, uh, and, and, and ours are obviously two that you just mentioned. All right, the next question is going to be a special question in the back and right center from a local uh, Boys and Girls Club. My name is Nakaden. Uh, if you could spend a day with any famous coach or leader, who would it be? Great question, Nakay. Thank you for that awesome question. Uh, that's one that I actually think about so often. I appreciate Boys and Girls Club, you guys being here. Um, you guys are an inspiration to so many of us, and as coaches, um, we hope the honor is to one day uh, be able to coach young men and women like yourself. So appreciate you guys being here today. You know, there's been so many influences in my life. Uh, it starts obviously at home with my parents. Um, I always say the one extra day I get to spend with them is tremendous. But, you know, I'm very fortunate. You know, I, throughout my career, there's been so many role models for me. A guy like Leslie Frazier who was the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, who poured into me. Jim Caldwell, who was the head coach of the Detroit Lions. I look at, you know, Tim had mentioned that I started coaching Division Three football. Well, when I was 19 years old, a guy named Marty Favret gave me my first opportunity to be a football coach at the collegiate level, and he taught me how to work hard. I look at my former head high school coach who's no longer with us, Corky Rogers, who was the all-time winningest coach in college football. There's so many of those people that if I just have the opportunity to be around them, um, they're leaders of men. They're people that taught me so many life lessons, and I continue to try to learn, you know, as I've reached what I call, you know, middle age, and I encourage you young boys and, and girls to, to keep learning, to keep trying to strive for greatness, and, you know, even though you may feel like, hey, I've made it, keep learning, keep trying, and, and you guys got so many inspirations even sitting around you right now. Ask them questions and continue to challenge yourselves and push yourselves to be the best version of yourselves every single day, but thank you for that question. I'm thrilled you guys are here today. All right, we'll go to the fourth row, uh, left center. Hey, Coach, Tim Buckley, Daily Memphian. You mentioned that Florida State game earlier. Mo most of your kids really weren't even recruited by Coach Norvell, but what will that matchup mean to you personally, and what will that game mean to implications in terms of goals and expectations in that playoff spot that's available? Tim, obviously, I uh, appreciate the question. And as you alluded to earlier when we talked, I'm not allowed to give coach speak and say one day at a time, one, one practice at a time, as some of our players said. Uh, but the reality of it is, I'll start with that. You know, Mike and I have a tremendous relationship. Um, I wouldn't be standing here today if it weren't for him. And, you know, him and I were uh, thick as thieves for four straight years and, and relied on one another. And I learned so much from him and tremendous respect for him, his program. So many of those staff members are some of my closest friends, um, you know, and, and again, I'm, I'm grateful. But this is a great opportunity for us to go down there and play a, a team that will probably be a top 10 team in the country. Um, I'm sure people out there and say, wait, are they running the exact same offensive scheme? Sure. And uh, I'll have a few and he'll have a few tricks up his sleeves as well. But it's great. But when it's all said and done, it's not about me versus Mike Norvell. Uh, it's about the players going out there and competing at the highest level and truly uh, I won't give it any more thought once training camp starts until that week. We've got an, enough on our hands with a North Alabama and then a Troy, and then you know we'll, then we'll go down to Tallahassee, and they'll be coming off a bye. So uh, it's great. I know a lot of fans are excited about it. Obviously, if we handle our business, great things will come. But when it's all said and done, we got to handle our conference games, and, and the two games leading up to that game are the most important of the season, and it starts with week one. But uh, excited for the opportunity. Um, it's going to be a tremendous challenge. Um, and when we get there, we'll have a lot more questions, I'm sure, about me and Mike and, and the opportunity to go down there and compete at the highest level. Next question here on the far left. Hey, Coach. Sonoy Valencia with the Mean Green Show. I want to talk about one of your most recent quarterback commits and Antoine Hill, highest-rated quarterback commit in school history. 
What, what went into the pitch and landing Antoine? Yep, so I can't currently speak upon any uh, recruit. Um, so um, I can just say this. When we're recruiting, we try to recruit at a national level. It's as important as anything we do. We have so much to sell at the University of Memphis, and it's not a sales pitch anymore. It's truly, and I think part of it's because I've been there so long. I understand the culture. I understand uh, the positive and negatives. I understand what Memphis is all about. And no matter who we're recruiting, whether it's a high school a transfer or a junior college player, as we can talk to them about our success, right? We're one of eight teams in the country that have been to 10 straight bowl games. Uh, if you're an offensive player, uh, we've been very fortunate. I think last year we finished sixth in the country in scoring offense. Um, we got guys that want to be a part of this thing, right? The stadium renovations, the FedEx NIL deals, right? Oh, by the way, we're top 10% in the entire country in internship opportunities, right? We got service master, we got international paper, we got AutoZone, we got the great FedEx. We have all these Fortune 500 companies that are in the city of Memphis that give back to our students and we can help out our student athletes. We have the highest GPA in program history last semester. So these young men are coming to get a tremendous education. They're coming to get a tremendous opportunity to help themselves when football is all said and done with the internships. Oh, and by the way, hopefully we continue to play a winning brand of football. Any other questions for Coach? Oh, here in the center. Ryan, you lost um, some key offensive linemen. You lost some, some key defensive backs. Just how are you feel? the way you were able to kind of fill those voids for this season. Yeah, Frank, you know, it's, it's actually interesting. Even going into the bowl game, we lost two starters on our offensive line, a starting left tackle and a starting right guard. And we also lost a starting safety even before the bowl game. And so there's been plenty of time to kind of understand, hey, where do we need to fill these Floyds, right, and fill these pieces? Well, it always starts within the roster. I feel very comfortable with a lot of the guys we have returning and the guys are going to go compete. Um, but, you know, look, uh, we did bring in some new faces. You know, we're excited about what Jalen Nichols and Chris Adams can do at tackle. Kedra Lewis, guys that can go in there and play. You know, Jonah Gamble has, will be a four-year starter almost every position. Xavier Hill. Um, I, I'm ca quite excited, right? We bought in a, a new center that we're kind of excited to see. Obviously, we all know Jacob Like So, um, like I mentioned earlier, this is the most depth we've ever had at offensive line. Um, is the final five starters in place? No. But I always say this, and I think every coach in our conference would agree, you got to have eight. <laughs> and it's very, very hard in college football to have eight guys you can trust um, with the rotation. And then our secondary. You know, the one name that every you know, Tiger fan will remember is Greg Rubin. And Greg will be a, a four-year starter. He'll be a starting safety for us this year. And then the rest of the pieces, let's see where they fall. But we've been able to add a lot of transfers. Um, excited to see who all gets in the mix. Um, but there's still a lot of competition left. And that's the one unique thing. Generally, when you get out of spring, you say, hey, we're pretty solidified here. Very, very comfortable with who we have in the locker room. Um, but to say where each one of those members may fit when it's all said and done. And guess what? In a long college football season, uh, you're going to have a lot of people playing. You know, one year we had 14 different defensive backs playing. I certainly hope we're not at that number. Uh, but they all got to be ready to roll. And I think we got the right type of guys. Any last questions for Coach? Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers.